Hello friends. I wanted to take this opportunity to send an Easter greeting from my house to your house. And those of you that have known me and studied the Bible with me for years know that it has been on my heart for some time now to be able to convert the Bible studies that we did together into a format that other people could use in case um, they couldn't come out to a Bible study class or there was some reason that they couldn't attend or missed a class. These could be recorded and possibly even used as um, an absent Sunday school teacher or in small groups where maybe there wasn't an opportunity for a, a teacher to be present, that these this material could be used and people could be um, could benefit from this. So today is my very first test. And I hope that you'll bear with me as I struggle through how to do this and try to make this enjoyable, uh, an enjoyable presentation, just like I was there in person. So today, what I want to do is um, look at uh, just a scene from Peter's life that we encounter when we read the Easter story. You know, Peter, as one of Jesus' main disciples, was bold and brash and self-confident and you never think that anything's going to happen to Peter. He has control of the situation and he does great things for the Lord and yet we find in a moment of um, terror and a moment of uh, uncertainty that he falters under the pressure just like we would have to most likely and it is an event that will forever change his life. So let's pick the story up from there. After the Last Supper, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, or desert me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Now that sentence, after I have risen, I will go ahead to you in Galilee, the disciples didn't get it. They somehow never really realized that Jesus was going to die and that he would come actually come back to life. They just weren't emotionally prepared for any of the events that were happening that night. Peter replied, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times, not once, but three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. But we know that that's not what happened, don't we? We know that they did desert Jesus. We know that Peter was distraught and followed along behind. And when things got really bad and Jesus was being beaten and stripped and flogged and was taken before Pontius Pilate, Peter just was devastated and he ran away and hid this bold man who professed that I will die with you was nowhere to be seen and we know that these events were traumatic for him and they would have been for us too would we have not done the same thing if we were there and yet we know as we watch the scene unfold we know that it ends well that Jesus is raised from the dead but they didn't know that that night now, Peter was sitting out in the courtyard. This is after Jesus had been taken away, was probably in with Pontius Pilate. Uh, he's, he goes out in the courtyard and he's sitting there warming his hands by the fire. And this is what happens. Now, Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. And he denied it again with an oath. He starts cussing. I don't know the man. And after a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. See, he was a Galilean and he spoke with a Galilean accent. So there was no way to hide that. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Oh, then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. And before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went away 
crying bitterly, crying bitterly. This bold man who had all this self-confidence and the word is self-confidence. He had great confidence in his own ability to be strong and fearless and all of those things. He crumbled under the pressure and denied that he even knew Jesus. One of the most devastating scenes in the whole Bible, I think. If anyone needs grace and forgiveness, it's Peter. And if we ever find ourselves in that type of a situation where we've done some terrible thing, we've said some awful thing, and we don't think we could ever be forgiven, we have to remember this story, remember this Easter story of Peter, that he also did some thing in his mind that was a terrible thing. So after the resurrection, when after Jesus had been crucified and his body was placed in the tomb, three days later, we know that he was raised back to life. And the women came to the tomb to uh, attend to his body and found that the tomb was open. And angels said that Jesus wasn't there. So they ran and they got Peter and they told the apostles and Peter ran to the tomb and saw that the tomb was open. But it's still... It wasn't the same, even though Jesus appeared to Peter and Peter knew, knew that he had been raised back to life. There still was this lingering grief and these horrible feelings of self-incrimination of what he had done. As far as Peter is concerned, his ministry is over. You know, yes, Jesus is alive and yes, he will be going back to heaven, but the ministry that they thought they had here on earth wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to be walking and talking with Jesus every day like they had been for the past three years. They weren't going to be able to watch him perform miracle after miracle. And they weren't going to have the kingdom restored to Israel at this point. All their dreams weren't going to happen. This was not going to be the way they thought it was going to be. It's going to be the way God thought it was going to be, but not what Peter thought. So he goes back, the Bible says that Peter goes back fishing. And I take this to mean that he said, okay, it's over, I'm done, I'll just go back fishing. And that's what they did. So Jesus arranges a situation where he can deal with Peter. And this is the message of hope that we have when we read the entire Easter story. Yes, the resurrection is our hope. Yes, we will have eternal life. Yes, Jesus is coming again. But in the Easter story, we also find these this moment of profound forgiveness that Jesus takes the time to do something special and intervene in Peter's life. So days after the resurrection, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize that it was Jesus. They had gone out fishing. And he called out to them, friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, now we know that that's John, said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off. They were, they were fishing, they were hot in the boat, and he jumped into the water. And the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards out. When they landed, they saw a fire of coals burning there with fish on it. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've caught. So Simon climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore, and it was full of large fish, 153 large fish. But even so, the net wasn't broken, wasn't torn. So Jesus arranges this setting where he can personally come into um, contact with Peter in a meaningful way. So he motions for them to come into the shore. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Now, the Bible seems to indicate for some reason that there was some question about why people didn't recognize Jesus. 
Perhaps he looks different in his resurrection body. We're not really told, but Mary Magdalene didn't at first recognize Jesus at the tomb, and the disciples on certain occasions weren't quite sure that it was him. The two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus didn't know that it was Jesus at first, but they recognize him because of what he more from what he does. So they said, none of the so Jesus said, come and have breakfast. So none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these other apostles do? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Now that, think about that. Why would Jesus, first of all, we know why Jesus is asking the question, but why would he respond with an answer like that, feed my lambs? What's that mean, feed my lambs? Well, we realize that Jesus is talking about people. You know, feed my lambs, the very least of my brethren those that need the help most, right? Again, Jesus said, Simon, John, son of John, do you love me? He's emphatic, he wants to know. And, and, and he answered, Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said again, here's an action to this response. Take care of my sheep or my people. Take care of my people. He's giving Peter the message that if you love me, here's what I want you to do. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now at this point, Peter was hurt. He's probably exasperated. He probably feels like Jesus is digging at something that's terribly painful for him. He doesn't want to remember what he did. Jesus is asking him this direct question. The very thing that, that Jesus is giving Peter the opportunity to do is to make right the wrong. Do you love me? He said. Peter answers, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. So Jesus tenderly, tenderly draws Peter to profess his love for Jesus, which Peter wanted desperately to do. He wanted to know from Jesus that he was forgiven for this terrible thing that he did. Jesus never brings it up. He never says, Peter, look what you did to me. How could you do that to me after all I did for you? He doesn't do any of that. He doesn't do any of that. He just gives Peter the opportunity to say the things that are necessary for Peter's healing. And he gives Peter an opportunity to experience his forgiveness. He also then gives Peter an opportunity to be recommissioned for service. He sets his feet on the right path. He gives him a job to do. And in the coming days at Pentecost, he's going to give Peter the power to do it. He gives him the job. He sets his feet in motion and he gives him the power to do the job. Jesus recommissions him for service. Isn't that great? Isn't that what we want so many times when we failed the Lord? So many times when we've been a disappointment to ourselves and to others. So many times when we should have done one thing and didn't do it. So many times when we could have done better and we didn't do it. Don't we want to have that opportunity over again, to do it better, to do better the next time. That's what, that's what he did for Peter. So now we come to the end of this test video and our nation at this point is facing a pandemic and we're at home, most of us. And I can say from my own heart that I've been paralyzed by this pandemic. I've thought to myself, Lord, how are we going to recover from this? How are we going to go forward from this? 
how how do we do this when we we're not allowed out we we can't go to church we can't have our bible study we can't be with each other and listen to the music we can't fellowship we can't be with our family how lord are we going to do this and the answer to me came from the preparation of this little video and i thought I got a message from this from Peter. There's hope for a new tomorrow. We're going to recover from this. The day is going to come when we'll be able to go outside again. We'll be able to be with our friends and our family again. So in the meantime, I would like for us to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to overcome this paralyzing feeling by reaching out, pick up that telephone, call somebody that you know you needed to call that you haven't talked to for a while ask forgiveness for something that maybe is on your heart that you know you've done that you should not have done let jesus minister to you the way he ministered to peter if facebook is the way you communicate put those prayers out there Reach out to friends that you haven't talked to. Use this time to regenerate inside of yourself and let Jesus recommission you to go forward. That's my hope for you and my Easter message. If this message has been an inspiration to you and if you think this teaching ministry would be helpful to you, I'm going to... Um, be placing this up on YouTube for the first time. Once I get the platform ready, I, I'd like you to go up to YouTube and, and view the video. And if you like it and you want me to, to continue with it, I, I would like you to reach out to me through telephone, through a note in the mail, through, um, through Facebook, through an email, uh, through YouTube, whatever is your platform, let me know if this is something that will be helpful to you. And my hope for you is that you'll hold on till we see a new tomorrow. Thank you.